Good morning, I'm here with Warren, Warren Redlich, here in Singapore for the first time and we just had a very local breakfast at Toast Box. Kaya toast and sort of not quite raw eggs. Runny eggs, kaya toast and also local coffee. Get the milk coffee. Welcome to Singapore. Today we're going to talk to Warren about his travels in Asia, talk about Tesla, what he sees as truly important developments this year because we've heard so much news. Click subscribe to stay updated to more videos on Tesla. And of course, for those of you who do not yet know Warren, can you tell our audience a little bit more about yourself, please? Sure, I've been making YouTube videos about Tesla and SpaceX and other technology for about four years. I've actually had my YouTube channel for closer to 15 or maybe, I don't think it's 20 years, but at least 15 years. And I didn't really do a lot with my YouTube channel until about four years ago. I made a video about SpaceX that took off and the video did really well. And then I started making related videos and it just blossomed from there. And um, I've been interested in technology since I was a child and I'm, I'm old. So I remember when <laughs> I remember Steve Jobs and, and Bill Gates when they started their companies uh -huh. and I always followed the tech companies and I was always interested and I'm sort of an engineer wannabe. I was in college and I was taking classes to maybe think about being an engineer and then it was hard and economics was easy and more fun and I chose the easy path. And my life has worked out and I was a lawyer for 26 years in America and um, I have had a great life, but I think I'm sort of heading back towards the, I want to try to do something related to engineering mm. in the real world as opposed to just making videos. Your life has been an adventure. Yeah, you sure. grew up in New York State and here we are, halfway around the world. Behind us, we're in Tiong Bahru neighborhood, a UNESCO World Heritage Site in Singapore. What brings you all the way down here to Asia? Um, so I'm on an adventure, chasing some dreams. Uh, the primary dream I'm chasing is uh, I decided this. I'm, ha I'm having my midlife crisis and I decided I wanted to get married again and have kids again. Um, but the second dream uh, is I want to build a small electric vehicle, a single passenger uh, electric vehicle designed from the ground up for self-driving. And I realized after the past two years in America, when I was trying this in America, that number one, it's going to be hard to find a wife there. And number two, the cost of starting up the company is very challenging in America. And I visited Japan and I had lived in Japan before. And I thought this might work. Both ideas might work better in Japan. And then I still think it might work better in Japan. But mm. at a certain point, I decided, let me explore the rest of Asia. So I'm on my way to India and then Thailand and then the Philippines. And it turned out that Singapore was a great stop on that on that trip for a variety of reasons. One of them being I get to visit Darren and explore a place that I'd heard about, seen in a movie or two. Um, and I wanted to see what's that place like. And I wanted to get a chance to hang out with Darren. Myth busting, whether crazy rich Asians is legit or not. We will find out. Sure. Now you talk about dreams, Warren. And for many who follow you around the world, hmm. their dreams are also to and build their own journey with Tesla stock. For yeah. some, it's financial freedom. For some, they believe in the mission. Some yeah. are engineers themselves as well. This year has been a year of a lot of development. So for long-term investors, we want to reflect. In 2023, what developments do you say the top, maybe one or two ones, would be something five years from now we will still see as very significant? So for Tesla, yeah. I'm a SpaceX nerd also. Both. So for, both. for Tesla, this morning, sorry, in, this morning in Singapore time, Elon said yes to version 12 of FSD is going out to employees. So I think the, the game changer for transportation globally, or a, one of the game changers for transportation globally is self-driving cars. And I think, you know, we've had this before with Tesla FSD. I think this may finally be the step that not next week, but we're finally close to that path where the cars really legitimately drive themselves um, safely. And I have two Teslas and I've driven probably 60,000 miles, which is not, uh, you know, over probably about 100,000 kilometers in self-driving mode. Um, and and I believe it's it's not bad. It's it's not perfect, but it's not bad. Yeah. Um, and I, I think we're we're we've been pretty close and I think this may push us over the top. So that's the biggest one. Um, Cybertruck is coming. I actually think next week. I think people exaggerate the importance of Cybertruck for the long term. It's it's important in the short term. I, I have two Cybertruck orders. I'm excited about Cybertruck. But 
Cybertruck will never achieve the volume globally that will matter for the Tesla mission, but it will help the brand mm. um, in, in a variety of ways. And, and I think it's also like really cool um, as developing the technology, but really it's 2024 when the next big thing happens, which is when they we get more details on the next generation vehicle. I think we won't get that until 2024. Mm. And the next generation vehicle is the other really big thing that's coming. Um, and I think also probably something that's a little bit under the radar for most Tesla investors are is Tesla's development of not just AI for driving, but AI for a variety of, of missions. So AI for the robot, which is similar to FSD, but also some sort of larger sense of what can AI do for us, um, which is in coordination with X, formerly Twitter, in coordination with XAI. Um, there's a lot happening there that's yes. really exciting. And I just a really quick mention, I'm a SpaceX fan. The rocket's amazing. And the Boring Company, we were talking at, at breakfast about um, how we think RoboTaxi will probably take off more in, in Asia before it takes off in America. I also think the Boring Company and the tunnel systems will probably take off more in Asia mm. than they will take off in America because in America it's difficult to do any construction. Mm. But if China says we want tunnels, they'll have tunnels and Boring Company will bore tunnels for them. So I think we're going to see a lot of development, a lot of ways that makes transportation very different for people. And Asia may be leading, Asia is already leading in like battery technology, solar, um, electric vehicles. So, and, and like Americans don't understand that China doesn't just copy. Yeah. China, Asia is very strongly innovative. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to see a lot of, a lot of positive developments. And this may be the place to see a lot of it. There's a lot to unpack. As Warren mentioned, FSD Chalk just rolled out to Tesla employees. That FSD Chalk, because it's a, leap change in the way FSD is developed. We've also heard news on X recently that it's coming to China by late January. Tesla has officially confirmed it. Yeah, yeah. So the roadmap for global launch is there. So next year is going to be an inflection point for FSD. Yeah. And when we talk about again, adopting technology, even things like war, uh, Boring Tunnel, there are nuances, of course. There are certain parts of the US, like Las Vegas, have been very supportive of the Boring Company. Yes. A lot's been going on. Robo taxis are a lot more supported in Vegas as well. I don't, I'm not sure. I don't I know if they're big. So I just yeah. visited the Hyundai Innovation Center that just opened officially yesterday. Yeah. And they're building robo taxis here in Singapore mm. and shipping them to Vegas. Cool. So definitely in Asia, in Asia, there are parts like China, for instance, which are very progressive, but not everywhere is as progressive. Like for some parts, like let's say in Japan, it's going to take a while for technology to adopt also. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, I think so. I actually think there's an angle in Japan. We were talking about this at breakfast, that there's resistance in Japan. But in the cities in Japan, there are these powerful taxi interests that don't want robo-taxis to compete with them, and they don't allow Uber to compete with them. But in, in smaller towns in Japan and rural Japan, there are a lot of elderly people who don't have access to mobility, to transportation. And there really isn't a taxi industry that would be offended by robo taxis operating in those areas. So I think there's a chance that Japan would adopt robo taxi in smaller towns. Because I would get off at a train station at not that small of a train station. Yeah. Um, there's a city called Kakagawa, which has a, uh, a local bullet train stop, yeah. a, a Kodama bullet train stop. And there's a taxi or two there. But the next stop over, there's this big Ogasayama sports park that I was going to for an event. And I walked out of the train station. It's like, I was going to take a taxi to the event. and like. There's no taxis. Like, what do I do now? And I ended up walking, you know, a kilometer and a half uphill yeah. to get to the event. Um, and, you know, that's a place where, like, and for me, a kilometer and a half uphill, no big deal. I'm in good shape. Well, what if you have a person who's 85 years old and not in great shape? How are they going to get around? And I think robo taxis could be a solution that lowers the cost. Can I just dive into that a little yes, bit? Yes, please. So in U.S. dollars, it's typically about $3 a mile for a, an Uber. And in Japan, a taxi is about 300 yen a kilometer, um, which is about $2 a kilometer, so which is roughly the same dollars per kilometer, dollars per mile. So if you think about it in 300 yen per kilometer or $3 a mile, if you drop that price to a dollar a mile or 100 yen a kilometer, and I tell, I'll explain this to Japanese people, like what if the price of a taxi ride dropped from 300 yen a kilometer to 100 yen a kilometer, their eyes light up. They instantly see that value. 
And so for older people in Japan, all of a sudden a taxi ride is all of a sudden not such a bad idea. Yeah. All of a sudden that becomes a lot more convenient. And really, I think robo taxis without any major transition will ultimately get down to 50 yen a kilometer or 50 cents a mile. And then 50 US cents a mile. And then what I the the the, comp, the build company that I'm trying to start might be able to push that price down to 10 or 5 cents a mile, 10 or 5 yen a kilometer. Mm which um, is a stretch goal, but I think it's actually doable. And then that not only makes it accessible to the elderly, but also to the, to the middle class people in poor countries and working class people in developing countries where even a hundred yen a kilometer, a, do uh, a dollar a mile is maybe more than they can afford. That's right. Yeah. Well, solving autonomy, as Warren mentioned, will unlock a lot of value for a lot of people and ultimately make our lives better. And as one called out, there are always pockets or white spaces like rural Japan where yeah. some of these technologies could adopt first, not in the big cities. Ironically, the big cities may adopt it later because of certain vested interests. Yeah. Solving autonomy is a big thing. Elon Musk has said that he believes that Tesla will be known as an AI company by the end of the decade. What does that mean to you as an investor? Um, that's the big thing. Well, as an investor, I just see so many different ways that Tesla stock goes up 5x, goes up 10x. So going from 1.8 million cars a year to 20 million cars a year, yeah. that's a 10x. Going from 20 gigawatt hours of battery storage devices a year to 1,000 battery storage devices, you know, mega packs and power walls a year, that's a 50x. So that's, that's all like you don't even need crazy technology to get to 20 million vehicles or to get to a terawatt hour of battery storage. The demand is there for the battery storage. The demand is there for the vehicles. So that, and, and the technology is already there. You know, just with lithium iron phosphate batteries, with, without, without even nickel, you can see how we can get there. There's a lot of ways that happens. Then you get to self-driving and all of a sudden that's a game changer in terms of value. Um, I, one of the things I'm known for in my YouTube channel, which I don't talk about as much anymore, is I call it the battery revenue model. If Tesla sells uh, a Tesla Model 3, I'm going to use U.S. dollars because that's what I know best. Uh, let's say you have a hypothetical Model 3 that costs $30,000 and has a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack. This is not accurate, but it's in the ballpark. And that works out to $500 a kilowatt hour. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and if you look at Tesla products, in the ballpark of $500 a kilowatt hour was common across most of the things that they sell for most of the time. Megapack has gotten less expensive now. Yes. Megapack was priced at about $500 a kilowatt hour for a long time. It's now down to maybe $400. I mean, it will probably drop further. But still, if you just think about it, $500 a kilowatt hour and you go to a terawatt hour of products, well, that's $500 billion in revenue. Mm. Well, what was Tesla's revenue last year? $80 billion? About $80 billion. So, well, there's, there's a 5X, right? There's a 6X just on that. And really, one terawatt hour is just the energy products. You add another maybe half terawatt hour for the vehicles, and all of a sudden, you're at more than a 10X. And I think the price of the products will come down a little bit. That might drop it a little bit. So maybe it's only a 6 or 7 or 8X, but it's still a big jump. And then really, the AI thing is just, the, and I was kind of hinting on that before, Elon just said, yesterday day before yesterday two days ago. that he expects xai to double its compute every three months and tesla's uh ai team said i want to say it was a few months ago they basically put out a chart that indicates that they expect their computing power for the tesla ai training cluster to 20x in a little over a year yeah and that's all like to improve the development of artificial intelligence. So you need a lot of compute, you need a lot of data. Tesla is generating a lot of real world data with the cars. I think this is one of the things I think people don't see. At some point, they're gonna start making a fairly large number of bots. Mm. It'll be an early generation of the bot. It won't be the bot that we'll see widespread in five years. But if they are able to get a bot that can walk and do some limited exploring, like. Being able to walk through an environment like this, straightforward us, but what about these lines? There's this weird red and white. Yeah. Is that difficult for a bot to navigate? Does that throw off the bot? Does it need to learn how to walk through here? Does that change how it navigates the space? Um, when it starts to manipulate objects, right, which it's already doing. But in order to develop that further, 
you need to get a large number of bots out in the field generating data, exploring the real world. And what we're going to see is the AI, like most AIs that we talk about, large language models, are learning from human-generated data. Yes. But the cars aren't learning from human-generated data alone. They're learning well. from experiencing the world. And the bots will be exploring the real world and partly learning from what they're trained by humans how to do, Yes. but partly learning from their own experience. And that just grows and there's a certain point where it becomes amazing. So I do think that, I don't think, what do you say, the end of the decade? End of the decade, 2030s? No, I think Tesla will be known as an AI company in one or two years. It, it should, let me rephrase that. I think some of us already think of Tesla as an AI company. Sure. James Dalma, myself, Stephen yeah. Mark Ryan, Dave Lee. You, Dave Lee. Yeah, Dave Lee very clearly. I think some people will come around to that and will take time. Wall Street will take, maybe Wall Street won't see it till the end of the decade. Like, yes. But a lot of us already see it. And I think within one or two years, like when the bot starts walking around and start, when people start seeing the bot in the field, when the cars are driving themselves, I think Wall Street will still see it's a car company. Yeah. They'll see it's a robot company. They yeah. won't see, no, that's an AI company. Yeah. Some of us already see it. No, that's an AI company. And, and the future that we don't really know the future of AI. We don't know how dramatic that's going to be, but I think it's going to be really, really dramatic change in the way we live our lives. I just want to build on Warren's earlier point. Like today, many Tesla owners and investors are very excited the Cybertruck is launching next week. However, the more profound change is when you start seeing Tesla bots for sale in Tesla stores. That's going to be like how you see an iPhone for sale in an Apple store for the first time. Totally different product category, 10x market opportunity, more than 10x is solving the world's labor market. And that's going to be a point of no return for Tesla. Yeah, and I, I would say my hope and dream is I'm driving, F I, don't, I have FSD beta on both my cars. I've driven FSD beta. My hope and dream is that we get a bot beta program. That when the bot isn't really ready for prime time, they start selling bots to crazy people like me and Darren who will say, sure, $25,000 for something that's not very functional. I'll take it. I literally like I have this hobby of country line dancing in America that I was doing. I could imagine bringing a bot with me and training it to do country line dancing, like just a stupid yeah. thing. But, you know, it will be fun. It's like imagine the, the Chuck Cooks of Tesla bots, <laughs> how cool that would be. So let us know down in the comments. Would you be willing to be a Tesla bot beta tester? And if it costs twenty five thousand dollars, would you buy it? Yeah. Now, for many Tesla investors, this has been quite a ride. 2020 has been a great bull run. Ever since then, it's been relatively flat. And long-term investors know there are periods of years like from 2013 to 2019, six years when nothing happened to the stock. Yeah. What do you see ahead in the next three years? Do you expect it to be relatively flat until the world starts seeing the shifts and recognizing Tesla's AI potential? I am really bad at making short term. I, I learned this. Yeah. I think that Tesla has largely followed the path I thought they would follow as a company. And I focus more on what are they doing as a company and I focus less on what's happening with the stock price. I don't have any plans to sell Tesla stock in the next three years. So the stock price doesn't really matter to me. And if things go well and I get more cash, I'm actually, I have cash right now that I'm holding because I have expenses and I'm trying to figure out what my expenses are gonna be in my life. Once I have a better sense of what my expenses are, I'm probably gonna buy more cash. I am making small bets that on Tesla options, long-term, you know, two-year options. I have made a few of those small bets, but they are very small bets, you know, probably in total less than 1% of my portfolio. Got it. But if they work out, they like 10X or 20X. Um, you know, if they deliver FSD and it's real and you take the, the, the nags away and the car just drives itself and you can look at your phone or you can eventually go in the back seat, the value unlock, at, there's a certain point where I think Regular investors have to see, okay, something's changed. Yeah. Um, once most investors and investment advisors can model the revenue stream and profit stream from RoboTaxi, because that's the, the game changer is, I mean, let me lay out my, my RoboTaxi yes, model. Please. Imagine Tesla owns its own vehicles. It owns a fleet of 10 million vehicles, which Elon projected Tesla would have its own fleet of 10 million vehicles uh, when he spoke at, at the, um, the Autonomy Day event, I think it was 2019. Um, 10 million vehicles making 50,000 US dollars a year in gross profit. And if you think about what an Uber driver might make, some of them make more than $50,000. And 
for a variety of reasons, I, I, I could go through the math, but I think $50,000 a year in gross profit is not crazy. For the early days when you only have 10 million or 20 or 30 million robo-taxis on the road, Tesla robo-taxis on the road, I don't think that's crazy. So $50,000 in gross profit times 10 million vehicles is $500 billion a year in gross profit, not revenue. Mm. $500 billion a year in gross profit. Tesla's gross profit last year, like 20 billion. That's a 25X. Yes. And that's just the beginning. Now you go to 100 million, uh, 100 million robo taxis making $20,000 a year in gross profit. So you 4X the number of vehicles and you've reduced the profit from 50,000 to 20,000. And now you've got $2 trillion a year in gross profit. And you start to get to numbers that are like, well, let's see, 2 trillion in gross profit. Just give it a, and then there's some net profit reduction. But if you give it a 10X on gross profit, which is kind of low, well, that's a $20 trillion market cap. Mm. And then you get, then you add bot. And you mentioned bot, like, we don't really know, I, the, the way I see bot, just really quick on bot, it's going to cost probably long-term $10,000 or less for Tesla to manufacture a bot. It weighs 1 20th or maybe 1 15th of the weight of a Tesla Model 3. A Tesla Model 3 costs Tesla about $30,000 to manufacture, so it should easily be less than one-third yes. the cost of manufacture of a Model 3. And especially when you're manufacturing at a scale, when you're manufacturing millions of them, the cost of production should go down. But what's the value? If it's able to do work at US $20 an hour, which is roughly minimum wage in America today, it depends on where you are in America, but it's a $20 an hour job in America is not a intellectual job. Mm. It's a you know manual job that a lot of that work can be done by a bot. Even if the whole job can't be done by the bot, if the bot can do some of the work, you go from needing 10 workers in your store or factory to eight workers or whatever the, the, the company is. Well, you've just opened up $20, 000, $20 an hour times 2,000 hours a year is $40,000 a year in value. And the bot does two shifts and doesn't need vacations and doesn't take sick leave. And, you know, it may, it, it won't necessarily, but you could see a bot working 4,000 hours a year instead of 2,000 hours a year that a normal human would work. Mm. Well, 4,000 times... Twenty dollars an hour is eighty thousand dollars a year in value for the owner, <clears throat> and it might last ten years. Yeah. So it's generating eight hundred thousand dollars in value, and it costs less than ten thousand dollars to manufacture. <laughs> if Tesla captures a hundred thousand, if Tesla is able to charge a hundred thousand dollars for the bot, or make a hundred thousand dollars in revenue, maybe off a combination of the price of the bot plus the software that it sells, yeah. along with the bot software services over that ten years, let's say. And it only costs them ten thousand dollars to make it. That's a ninety percent gross margin. That's right. And even if you assume there's competition, even if you assume that Tesla only gets twenty percent of the market, that's still crazy amount of value. Yeah, and and I would say that it, there are first mover advantages that you start to wonder, like Starlink. I'm sorry, I'm going to go off on a tangent. SpaceX is deploying a network of satellites called Starlink. And SpaceX has a lower cost of deploying the satellites, launching the satellites, putting them in orbit. They're manufacturing the satellites themselves, so their cost of manufacturing the satellites is lower. Now, imagine you were thinking, I want to build a network of satellites to compete with SpaceX. Well, your launch costs are higher. Your manufacturing costs are higher. They're in space first. They have built their customer network before you have. How do you, do you bother investing, right? Are you going to invest $100 billion to build out a network that will be second best, that you won't be able to undercut them on price because they can always undercut you on price because their cost structure is lower. If you're deciding where do I invest my money, and so the same thing with bot, like if Tesla is manufacturing bot and they're like really, really good at manufacturing, and if they have the best software for bot, how much would you have to invest to catch up? It's true. Same thing with RoboTaxi. And same thing with the supercharger network playing out today. Yeah, yeah. And we're seeing people are now buying Tesla superchargers. Gas stations are buying Tesla superchargers. Can you right. imagine? No, but there's other companies that are buying Tesla superchargers and putting their own brand on them. That just happened. Yes, all right. So when you are thinking about where am I going to invest my money to yeah. start up a company or to build out something, you don't invest where there's a first mover that has advantages. You, the smart thing to do is find something where there's a market that's not being served and you can change the game there okay. rather than trying to compete against somebody who's already changing the game. And, you know, if you're not that far behind, maybe it makes sense to be number two in a market. Mm. But if you're number two, look at Apple. Like, 
they don't sell 80% of the phones. 20%. But they get 80% of the profit. Yes. So, I, I and I, I think that Tesla is actually better positioned in robo-taxi and they're better positioned in bot. Um, so, you know, in AI, there's a lot of things going on in AI. So that's really hard to call. Open AI, Google's AI, Meta's AI. There's a lot of different things going on in AI. There's a lot of, I mean, I'm a, I love ChatGPT. People are, are knocking on, it's flawed, it's not perfect, but I, I use ChatGPT all the time. I use ChatGPT, I think, on the flight here. <laughs> I was asking it questions like, I didn't know how to enter Singapore. And before I got on the plane, I asked ChatGPT, what do I need to enter Singapore? Oh, you wow. need to download this app called My ICA and fill out this thing. And I did it. And like, I would not have, I could have searched the internet and found it myself, but ChatGPT found it faster than I would have. It's amazing. And it gave me a link. One last question, Warren. You talk about where to invest some money. So imagine if you had to start from scratch as an investor. Imagine you had $100 right now. You could invest in any of Elon's company. No public private market limitation. No minimum spend limitation. So there's all these companies like Tesla, SpaceX, XAI, Boring Company, Neuralink. How will you spread that $100 today? Um, I'm really unusual on this one. I would probably put it all, maybe 50-50 Boring Company, Neuralink. Huh. because Boring Company and Neuralink are currently undervalued. Like, I see Boring Company becoming a trillion-dollar company, and its current valuation is somewhere around $6 billion, which that's a 200x. Mm. And I, it might be a $10 trillion company. Um, like, I think it's a trillion-dollar company by 2030. Early 2030s, it's a, it's a 20x, a 200x. Um, Neuralink... It, it, it's hard to wrap my head around what Neuralink could be worth because it's easy to see people paying $10,000. Like, you know, I have a smartphone, right? And you could, these cost about $1,000. This is an iPhone 14 Pro. People will buy an iPhone 14 Pro and then two years later, they'll upgrade to the new iPhone and spend another $1,000. Well, the gain when Neuralink replaces your phone the interactive gain, the user experience, there's so many gains to that, which is, we're 10 years from that. I think we're about 10 years from that happening. Maybe it's 15, maybe it's eight, but the gain from having Neuralink in your skull is so large. And what people are used to paying for, let's say eye surgery, laser eye surgery, um, I don't think it's crazy to say people will pay $10,000 for a Neuralink. And the value it will generate for them is, you know, kind of like I was saying about bot the value it will generate for you in terms of productivity and your ability to earn an income dramatically larger. So, well, what's the market for Neuralink? It's kind of like the market for bot. The market for bot is, is everyone is everyone. It's, it's 8 billion or more. It's not hard to imagine that there might be more than one bot per person. Mm. So you could be like 20 billion bots. And that's, that's, if you built a hundred billion bots a year, it would take a hundred years to build enough bots. Right. So, so the market for bot is insane, but, like, and everyone might have not just one Neuralink, but multiple Neuralinks. And imagine that, you know, you're doing 100 million Neuralinks a year. New, new installs. And then people upgrade every three years. You'll be like, Neo, I just learned Kung Fu. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know that it's that, but it's hard to say what the benefits will be. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like I'm, I have a family risk of Alzheimer's disease. Mm. And I don't think that Neuralink will address that in 10 years. But I think there's a really good chance it's going to help us address that in 20 years. And my risk starts in about 20 years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people are like, are you crazy? You put that in your head. It's like, well, I know what's likely to happen to my brain in 20 years, 25 years. To about 25 years, it's going to happen. To, it's very 50-50, maybe 25%, whatever. There's a substantial risk of that happening to my brain. I think the risk of Neuralink is way lower than that. Okay. Um, so... I'm going to, I'm going to adopt Neuralink fairly early and, and then like vision, like, you know, I'm wearing glasses and yeah, you can get laser eye surgery, but what if there was a camera, you know, seamlessly implanted somewhere in your head and it gave you not just normal vision, but gave you supervision. Like what if you could all of a sudden see an ultraviolet and see an infrared and what other benefits would that have? It's, this is all like, it's a little crazy, but it's not really crazy that all these benefits are coming. And so the value lock unlock there is, well, 100 million people a year getting Neuralink implants. Yeah. New. Yeah. And then people upgrading every two or three years to the newer Neuralink chip. I, I don't know, like, 
the size of that market's insane. Because, it's, like, with the... I don't think that $10,000 is crazy. No, it's not. It's super value for money to enhance you. Yeah. People are willing to pay 100000 People pay that for breast implants. There you go. I mean, maybe breast implants are more valuable than brain improvement. I don't know. <laughs> so, thank you so much, Warren, for such an insightful discussion. As those of us who read Walter Isaacson's book on Elon Musk, at the end, the final sentence, which is a great tie into the Steve Jobs book was, it's the crazy ones who change the world. Neuralink, boring company, may sound crazy, but that's precisely what we need in today's world. If you found this video useful, please click the like button, subscribe to Warren on YouTube and on X, and we'll see you soon in the future. Click subscribe to stay updated to more videos on Tesla. And let's go have a good weekend in Singapore. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you.